This is Wednesday, March 28th. There are 112 days until San Diego Comic-Con 2018. Welcome to SD Concast, the official podcast of the San Diego Comic-Con unofficial blog. B-A-N-U-H-T-E-E, go. Oh my God, I love Life Journal and my Life Journal loves me. Current food is hyperactive. Current news are refuse 73. I love her color scheme in pink and purple. Good evening. I am your host, James Riley, and joining me on the podcast tonight, Carrie Dixon. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. And Andy Wagner. Hey, thanks for being here. All right. So we're going to take comments and questions probably throughout the show, but definitely at the end of the show. And you can tweet us at SD underscore comic underscore con or use the hashtag SD concast. We'll also be keeping an eye on the YouTube live chat if you want to comment there. Uh, we are ready to go. Carrie? Okay, so before we get started, I actually just wanted to address something really quickly. If you are unfortunately one of the few people still having trouble accessing our site, just know that we're working on it. And it, unfortunately, it may take a few more days to resolve. Trust me, there is literally no one who is more frustrated than I am, but I promise we're working to resolve it. We are fully aware it's not the majority of you and we're so sorry. But uh, with that said, let's get on to the news because I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but it's kind of Comic-Con season now. Boo! Oh, wait. Yo, yay! <laughs> <laughs> when, when Boo did that and yay. Oh, God, I don't know. I feel like it's just like, come on. Yeah, it just, <laughs> like it just the... someone flipped a switch. Yes, yeah. but it very much feels like it's on. And I think and... that switch was WonderCon. I think so, too. Which we will be getting to. This is the WonderCon wrap-up show, but um, I think we may end up talking about Comic-Con a little bit more than WonderCon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because even though this is the WonderCon wrap-up show, uh, the Comic-Con news is kind of uh, overshadowed. And news? That is definitely that we finally got a date for the General Hotel cell. Yep. It is going to be on Wednesday, April 4th. So that's next Wednesday, a week from today, if you're watching live. And it, it'll be just like in previous years, it will start at 9 a.m. Pacific time. You will be emailed on Friday a link from Comic-Con International, and they haven't sent out any emails yet, so I keep getting asked, like, should I have gotten an email yet? No, you're fine. You're fine. But on Friday, they will send you an email with the link. Uh, and then on Wednesday, starting at 8 a.m., you can actually click on that link and it will take you into everyone's favorite words, a randomized waiting room. <laughs> That's right. And then at 9 a.m., uh, basically it'll go live. And if it works like last year, it'll be through a system called Qit, And all of a sudden your little waiting room will turn into a little walking man and it'll show you like, your walking man is very close to the finish line or your walking man has a very long way to go. <laughs> uh, and with the hotel cell now, it, speed no longer matters. The way that it works is when that little walking man comes up, that's already your timestamp. Like the system already has given you a timestamp. It's not when you hit submit, it's like the time that they grant you access to the form. And then, so once you actually get access to the form, you don't have to speed through it. Now don't take like an hour to fill it out. I would probably not take more than 15 minutes. And I think last year it gave you a warning. Does that sound right, James? A warning? Yeah, like if, it, like if you had taken too long to fill it out. Oh yeah, the, the, it does pop up like after 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, so it, you don't have to take too long, but don't take forever. Fill it out, submit it, and then we will hear on, I believe it's April 9th and April 16th, what hotels we got. And then if you didn't get a hotel, you will find out on April 23rd. So, yeah. What do we want to talk about as far as all of this goes? Well, so some of the details about uh, hotels, which did you talk about when they email you the results? Uh, yes. It's yes. April 9th and 16th. And last year, there were good hotels in both rounds. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, it wasn't totally like if you didn't 
if you don't get an email on April 9th, like you're not getting a downtown hotel. That's not how it worked last year. Right. Um, I do believe that there were more downtown hotels in the first round. And also, I think the majority of specific hotels had most of their notifications out in the first round. Yes. Like, so it was like in blocks of hotels, it seemed. Yes. But like the notifications also didn't seem to go out in any particular order. So it also wasn't like if you filled out the form first before someone else, like they may still have gotten their results back before you did and all of that. And we get the question every year of like, well, I get great gained access to the form before person X, Y, Z, but they got their number one hotel and I didn't. There are so many factors that go into determining all of this, like the room type, the hotel order that you put it in, the dates of arrival. Uh, quite frankly, it could just be on peak throwing darts. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 that's literally what they do is the throwing darts because what they do is they pick people in three second chunks. Yeah. So everyone who gets access in three seconds, which could be hundreds of people, are randomly picked from the same group. So they pick this three second group. And so if you got in in second one and someone else got in in second three, that person in second three can still get picked before you if they pull them out first. So those three seconds get in before the next three seconds, but within that three seconds, it's completely random. Yeah. So you should have a decent idea of whether or not you got in early or not based on, again, that little walking man, assuming the system works the same this year, but uh, don't try to logic it. Don't try to like, <laughs> don't try to like figure out the formula. Cause don't it just don't overthink it. Just it just form. leads to so many frustrated people every year. And I get it because the one thing that Comic-Con attendees do not like is not having information. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that is something that we just cannot handle. So I get it, but just, it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And I also want to mention uh, every year we get asked as well, like what happens if I don't get a hotel in hotel apocalypse or the general hotel cell? And every year our answer is the same. You will be okay. There's a bunch of things that happen. So when notifications go out, like this is the hotel that you received, a lot of people will have roommates and maybe each roommate submitted for the, a hotel. And so maybe like four roommates submitted for a hotel, they get four choices, but only one once a room. All of a sudden those three hotel rooms go back up. So there will be a resale later. Uh, there's also always people get in off the waiting list. It really does happen. And also as we get closer to the convention, there are always hotel rooms down in Mission Valley. Absolutely always and for decent prices. And even though Mission Valley is not necessarily like the cool place to be, there's shuttles. It's quiet. <laughs> there are much worse options. And the yes. shuttles are free. Yes. So. Okay. So we have a couple of questions about the hotels. Um, there's the early bird hotel option, which is um, you must prepay, I think it is, for all yeah. four. And all four, uh, minimum four nights in most cases, you have to pay for it. And it's no cancellations, no changes. It's basically just you get these and they're all uh, in Mission Valley, pretty much. They're all in Mission Valley or the airport. Basically, they're so, not downtown hotels, but that will close on April 3rd because someone asked us and when that will shelter close. Island. Apparently, there may be a shelter island on there. Okay. So when do the, when does early bird close? I think it's right before. It's uh, it's April. It's April 3rd, and then the general hotel cell will open the very next day. Okay. So, And then um, another question from uh, Night Bodega is, um, if selected for the hotel lottery, does it give you the total price for the nights you selected and all you have to pay is two nights? Yes, it does. Uh, on the it email? Will yes. On the email that you receive, it will basically show you, like, uh, you have selected this hotel five nights stay. The total is $1,800. Your deposit is 800 whatever yeah and then you just have to pay the two nights within three days yes and you're good to go until you get to the hotel and then it's a normal process so you give them a credit card and then you get charged when you leave 
Yes. Um, and then just to answer some general questions, if you get a hotel and you don't want it, you have two options. You can either do absolutely nothing and just not pay the deposit and then it will be released. You can call Lone Peak and tell them you don't want it and they'll release it. Um, so both of those are an option if you don't want the hotel that you receive. And we get questions every year of like, what if you don't accept the hotel room, does that take you off the waiting list? And every year the answer is incredibly murky because <laughs> you guys try getting an answer out of on peak. <laughs> the same answer <laughs> twice in a row. Let's put it that way. You get an answer. Out. <laughs> Try getting the same answer yeah. twice in a row. What James said. So we get asked that every year, and I wish I had a better answer. And every year, again, the answer seems to just be luck in the draw. <laughs> so it, it is, but also there is the options of select this if the if none of the hotels on your list are available. Yes. And they added one this year that probably should have been on there from the beginning which is book me at a hotel that is closest to the convention center, regardless of rate and shuttle availability. So that basically is for the people who want downtown or just whatever they can get that's close. They don't care how much it is. Just put me close to the con. Um, the other yes. ones are book me at the lowest rate where it doesn't matter where, book me at any hotel that's on the shuttle route, or just disregard my request completely. And then you won't be put on a wait list at all. But the other three will put you on the wait list, correct? Well, I believe actually there is, I don't have the visual guide open right now, but I think you actually have to like ticky, like, yes, I want to be on the waiting list. I'm pretty sure. Hold on and I will tell you. So, so yes, the taking you on or off the list is based on the options you choose when you submit your form. Yes. So there's, it, there's actually like a ticky box that says waitlist preferences. Place me on the wait list, or I do not want to be on the wait list. I mean, there's absolutely no reason not to be on the wait list. Like, there's none. <laughs> so select that you do. <laughs> yeah. You um, want to be on that list. Yes. Other general questions that we get are if you book a room, can you change information? Like, let's say your roommate change, or let's say there's always a hotel trade. <laughs> It's not uh, official, but there's always some hotel trading that goes on. And in years past, the way that that works, like if you get a hotel and your roommate already got the hotel you wanted, but now you want to give this hotel to someone else, the way that it's worked in the past, if you choose to go that route, is you can call on Peak and have them change it. Again, your mileage is going to vary depending on the rep that you speak to. So if you get one who's not being helpful, quite frankly, just hang up and call again. <laughs> <laughs> again, I mean, the two answers in a row that are the same. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. All right, so what other questions do we have? I'd say that's about it on the hotels. Um, it's, it's it's gonna go fairly quickly. They, they do fill up. Um, I mean, at least the downtown ones will fill up rather quickly. Most people, I think last year it was within three minutes, typically. That sounds right. Okay, so here's here's a good question on Twitter. Uh, Christian Hernandez asked, does the timestamp matter? It did not seem to last year. Can we uh, input multiple forms? So again, the only timestamp that actually matters is like the timestamp of when you are granted access to the form. That's nothing you have any control over most unfortunately. Uh, again, it doesn't really matter how long you take to fill out that form. But once you get that form, go ahead and fill it out. Whichever form loads first, fill that out. And then you don't want to submit multiple forms because in years past when they have received multiple forms, they say, okay, this person submitted two forms. We're going to assume that they made an error on the first one and that's why they submitted a second one and we're going to toss your earlier submission. So that puts you down lower. So you don't wanna do that. Um, a couple of things that they have flagged in the past as a duplicate form include name, email address, uh, Phone ID. Number. Yes, I think phone number was one. Uh, did I say email address? If not, that was one. So don't fill out the same form twice. Yeah. Right. 
So uh, one of the questions we just got, Iron Souls on the chat, is have rates gone up since last year for hotels or are they about the same? Actually, for almost every hotel, they are exactly the same. In fact, didn't Kim tell us that something went down? Yes, like one the of the hotels front? actually went down. I think I the Bayfront went down. I think Bayfront, yeah, went down like 5 or $10 or $20. Something, it went down a little bit. So yeah. um, I think this is because uh, a couple of years ago when they were negotiating uh, to stay in San Diego for a few more years, they made uh, the hotels uh, holding their rates as a, um, uh, as a you know, you, you must hold your rates or we're not going to stay here, basically. So it, they basically put the, put the screws to them and made them hold their rates for a few more years. Yes. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay. I think that's about it on hotels. So good luck, everybody. Um, as usual, we'll be trying and we'll keep an eye on everything and let you know. And hopefully there's none of the previous year's uh, errors repeated. They may come up with new errors, but hopefully no repeats of thought. You know, year. you know what though. Last year, I think because they instituted the randomized waiting room, the process went so much smoother. Like there was just there's a reason we call it hotel apocalypse, <laughs> and it's because for years and years and years, it was just a nightmare. Like nothing would go right. Like, remember yeah. that year that the form screwed up for a third of people? Are they yeah. just kind of went, ah. I got that. That was that was exciting. <laughs> Not being able to do the pull-down menu at all. And when, like, freaking out about what's going on. Yes. And so then they, like, sent you guys another form to fill it out. And then some people wound up with, like, three hotels, even though they only submitted a form for one. I remember people got placed in a room with roommates they'd never heard of. Right, like yeah. weird, awful stuff happened. Um, the randomizer was a little too scale. random. Yes, it was a little too random. It was even deciding who you were going to room with. Um, so that sucked. But last year, honestly, like, was a step in the right direction. It went so much smoother. It does kind of suck not finding out what hotel we got now until like the 9th or the 16th. But I'm guessing that they drag it out longer now to try to minimize some of the weirdness and rushing to get everything right. finished that caused a lot of the errors. So it is understandable. A little slower, hopefully fewer errors, and then we're good to go. Yes. Yes. All right. So we have a reader poll up, right? Yes, we do. And it is going to close at 12 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Uh, we would love if you would go vote on it. It basically just asks, what is your number one preferred hotel? And you can choose your number one preferred hotel in downtown Mission Valley and then the other areas. And then every year we take a look at those results and we basically go, okay, these are the most popular hotels. So as you fill out your six, and that's the other thing we didn't mention on the form, you can submit up to six downtown hotels and six hotels in a different area. You do not have to choose 12 hotels. You can literally just choose one hotel and submit it. And that's and the only, hope. yeah. And just hope. And then, and then if you like, if you want downtown and there's only one ho downtown hotel you really want, you pick that hotel, and then you pick the option for, if my room is not available, pick the one closest to the convention center. Yeah. And they'll just throw you in the closest room if it's not your preferred hotel that's available. Yes. Yes. But, uh, but having said that, the reason we do the poll is so that we can look at what are the most popular hotels. So that as you rank your six, maybe you can be like, you know, maybe I like the, I don't know, the residence in that has the breakfast that you were talking about, <laughs> yeah. James. But that's not necessarily the closest hotel, but I know it's not that popular. So I'm going to put that as like my number two hotel because if I'm not going to be staying at the Bayfront, at least I'll get a breakfast. Like right. th that kind of logic. So the, the logic everyone applies to their hotel choices is, is sometimes <laughs> a little odd. But it's, it's a very personal someone choice. Someone's going to be like, Pendry man. That's got to be an awesome hotel. It's the most expensive. I'm staying there. You know what? Okay, so 
<laughs> Here's the funny thing. We were so excited last year when the Pendry opened because it opened before Comic-Con. So we were like, it's going to be part of the hotel sale. This is going to be great. And then it wasn't. And that's basically because Nerdist, Sci-Fi, and USA bought all of it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but it is part of the hotel block this year. It is officially the most expensive hotel. It has uh, taken that crown from the Hard Rock. <laughs> So, yeah, if you want to go stay at the Pendry, you might see some sci-fi people, I guess. <laughs> if they book in the rooms there, yeah, it may become yeah. the, new, uh, the new Hilton or whatever it was, or, or whatever right. we're staying now. You, you never oh, know who you're going to bump into on an elevator. Right. That's right. All right. The and other... Then, go ahead. But the other thing we have that is coming up uh, is the parking, which everybody is asking about as well. Yep. So the parking lottery is actually going to open on Sunday, which is a very strange date to me, but I confirmed with Ace today that that date is correct. Uh, there will be a few changes that we know about, but we can't actually discuss it yet. Uh, but we should have some more information about that here in the next day or two. And then, like I said, the actual lottery sign up, because everything's a lottery, for parking will open on Sunday. And then you will have until, what is it? It's like April, like April 23rd or something to fill out the lottery. And then you will be alerted. Yeah, you can, it's the 23rd of April. And then they will tell you which group you got. There's always six groups. First group will start on May 1st, and then you'll be able to go in and purchase your parking. And then the following Monday, group two will go in, et cetera, et cetera. So. It's also Easter Sunday. Happy Easter. At least have a, at least have a to do it. But, <laughs> yeah, so it's basically the same process as previous years, basically. Yeah. Well, it will be a little bit different. But... but uh, but the, the weekly purchasing for each yes. group, that, that process hasn't changed within the public sale being six weeks later. Yes, correct. So that's all the same. So look for that in the coming days and get ready to put in your information starting on Sunday, April 1st. Okay, and now we're on to Comic-Con news, even more Comic-Con news, uh, because as we said, someone flipped a switch and stuff started happening. So what's up first? Okay, so what's up first is some news that we announced today, which we are very excited about. Grand Design, which is basically a marketing firm that's done a lot of offsites at Comic Con. They do the Adult Swim thing every year. They did the uh, wrecked barge out back behind the convention center last year. They did the Blizzard Citadel in Petco last year. They've done a bunch of stuff. They are basically going to take over what was the Petco Interactive Zone, which is that huge area in basically the Petco parking lot right by where you get off the bridge that always has like a whole bunch of activations. activations. Yes, that's the word I was looking for <laughs> over there. They are taking that over. It's going to be rebranded as the experience at Comic-Con. And they're making some pretty cool changes, actually. They are, I don't know if you went to our site yet, but if you didn't, you should go look at the image. Instead of it just being like... Now. <laughs> instead now. Instead of just being like hot asphalt pavement uh, in the parking lot, they're actually going to put, it looks like, some fake grass. They're going to have seating areas. They're going to have more food options. They're hoping for, like, 10 food trucks or food stalls or things of that nature. They're going to have late-night programming. They're hoping to do concerts at night to keep uh, the interactive zone open until, like, 11 o'clock at night so that there's stuff going on every, every night there. They're going to have some, like, an adult-only area where you can go and get alcohol. And <laughs> and <laughs> Iron I Souls a lot of years, right? Iron Souls wins because they just asked, "Is there a Ferris wheel?" <laughs> 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 uh, not not in the drawing. <laughs> We're rooting However, for it. But. <laughs> I am rooting for it. However, uh, if you look at that drawing closely, you might notice the Sleepy Hollow bridge from a few years ago. Very much don't think that's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> but, it could uh, just be a generic covered bridge going to <laughs> another activation. We don't know. I'm pretty sure they stole that from the Sleepy Hollow. 
<laughs> That's funny though. But yeah, if they, so, that, if they ran it, they didn't steal it. So <laughs> we'll see. They just, like, look at the, they just looked at previous years, like, oh yeah, let's throw that in there. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, so it should be good. Uh, we're excited about what they're gonna do. So yeah. All right, and also what we've got is Rave of Thrones potentially. It's been announced that uh, Christian Nairn, who is also known as Hodor, is coming back to the Omnia nightclub during Comic Con on Thursday, but uh, we're not sure exactly what it's for. So we know he'll be there, and he's been there for Rave of Thrones in the past. But I would say it's very very strong that it's Rave of Thrones considering he's done it like what the last three or four years at the Omnia yeah. I put money on it <laughs> yes yeah and then uh, after that we have another offsite that was announced called the Comics Online After Party at Brick by Brick featuring Stan Bush with special guests Random Gibberish Wither and the Midas Touch it is on uh, the 21st. That's a Saturday, 7.30 start time. Tickets are $15. Or you can buy them right now at Ticketfly or $20 at the door. Or if you're wearing cosplay, you still get in for the $15. Uh, Stan Bush, if you don't know, this is awesome. He is the guy who did a few of the songs on the Transformers soundtrack from the cartoon back in 1986. It's awesome, and uh, this should be cool. And I've actually seen Random Gibberish before in, of all places, uh, Michigan at uh, Yomacon. And they're pretty funny, too. So uh, this is something pretty cool. And it might actually entice me to actually go to an after hours offsite for the first time in a few years. So, well, besides uh, some other nighttime things. But this might, this might actually do it. Stan Bush might get me there. That's pretty cool. I, I don't know, James. I, I always say you'll sleep in your dead or in August, whichever comes first. Right. Or but, at Comic-Con uh, because... It's killed me each day. <laughs> <laughs> what the CBS panels are for, guys? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Who stays awake during Star Trek? Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else? What else is we do we have, uh, Andy? Uh, next, uh, we have HopCon coming back. Uh, we got HopCon 6.0 coming back for Comic Con. If you guys are familiar with the usual festival that happens at Stone Brewing Company over there in Liberty Station. Uh, it's going to be on Thursday, July 19th, which is a new date, apparently. And it's going to be from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Tickets are $75, and we don't have all the details just yet. But in the past, those tickets have included uh, 15 three-ounce beer samples, a commemorative HopCon glass, gourmet food stations, and a lot more. And those tickets are going to be available on Friday, April 20th. It's uh, on a new night this year, right? Didn't it use, isn't yeah. it usually on Wednesday? Yes. Popcorn? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. This year it's a, it's on Thursday now for some reason. Um, but if you're not drinking, if you are going to be the DD, the, uh, they do have designated driver tickets, which do not include access to alcohol. Those will only be $35. Uh, in the past, there's also been tickets that included a t-shirt uh, maybe some other swag. We're not sure yet, but this is a 21 and up event. So make sure you have your ID handy. And if you're uh, under 21, sorry, guys. And as always, you can go to our site and check our calendar where we have the most up to date events. We've got a couple we didn't talk about today. So be sure that you check that out. Yeah, uh, but also uh, the other further news from Comic-Con is we have some exclusives already announced. And oh really cool is uh, we also have pictures because Cryptozoic at WonderCon this weekend had on display their SDCC exclusives. And first up is the Series 2 of the DC Bombshells Golden Goddess set, which is, again, three figures. Um, then we have, those are actually limited to 250 each. Um, we have the DC Tiki's Obsidian Idol Batman, uh, limited to 300 of each. DC Pumps Batwoman, which is basically just a little shoe. Uh, we have the uh, Street Fighter Little Knockouts Metallic Green Cami, limited to 300 pieces. Uh, we have the Street Fighter Little Knockouts Metallic Green Blanca, 
also 300. Uh, the Ravishing Red Wonder Woman Little DC's Bombshells Vinyl figure. Uh, the Irradiated Cthulhu Cryptkins vinyl figure, limited to 300. And finally, the Street Fighter Knockout's Golden Goddess Chun-Li, limited to 250 pieces. So all of these exclusives were on display. You can see the photos on our site. Or if you are watching, you can see them go by uh, here while we were talking. Um, all of the prices uh, have not been determined yet. Um, for an example of those, you can just look at last year's and see kind of the general range that they're going to be in. Um, they may end up with more exclusives, possibly, but this is uh, a lot of what Cryptozoic is coming out with that you can pick up at Comic-Con this year. One thing I did want to mention, because I've actually had two or three questions about it, is uh, for you Outlander fans, they have a little Jamie vinyl figure, and that will debut at the con. But the coolest thing, honestly, that Cryptozoic does is uh, they do pre-sales for pickup at the convention. So starting here in about five weeks, they will start rolling out their pre-sales and you'll be able to go on and order the exclusives that you want. You'll pay a deposit, you'll get, uh, if they do it like last year, you'll pay a deposit and then you'll get a confirmation. You can just take that up to the booth, pay the rest of the money and get your exclusive and you know like it's reserved for you. Which is cool because last year some of their stuff, especially those golden goddesses, were very in demand. Like the, I feel like those sold out in like two minutes or something crazy last year. Yeah, the online sale sold yeah. out really quick. Yeah. They went really fast. And then we have another exclusive. Yes, we do. Uh, another exclusive is if you're ready for Christmas, we've got Hallmark exclusives, if you uh, can believe that already. We don't have the ornaments uh, announced for them just yet, but Popminded from Hallmark did reveal uh, several Pixel 8 enamel pins. Uh, if you are old school gamers like me, uh, you remember the Atari 8-bit games, and these are some of our favorite characters reimagined as Pixel 8s. Uh, let's see here. We've got Pixel 8 Aquaman and Mira. Pixel Man, sorry, Pixel 8 Ant-Man and the Wasp. We also have Bausch and Han and Carbonite. So those are just some of the exclusives. And like I said earlier, we don't know what ornaments they're going to have, but they always come with a few, at least one. Yeah, they so. always they always come with several, um, and we should be getting that information. I would say, probably April or May. There, Hallmark is actually one of the earlier ones to announce, um, but especially starting in May, like Comic Con season, yeah, is on. It really kicks off, yeah, um, and we don't have prices on these yet either. So keep checking back for that. We'll keep an eye out for that. All and right. Well, comes what everybody is wanting to know about. <laughs> Not just WonderCon, because it's now time for WonderCon wrap-up, but oh, specifically boy. the new signing lottery that they instituted this year. And let's start talking about it. And uh, what I have to say is, boy, do people have a lot of opinions about this. <laughs> strong opinions. <laughs> Very strong opinions. <laughs> but so do I, so that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Neither of you actually went to a lottery this weekend, right? I did not. I, I was one of those people who everyone complained about. I entered. I did not win. And then the next day I looked and I did win. I had a super mansion. Uh, but I was getting in line for actually the panels that day where super mansion was. And uh, my only goal was really being there for the timeless panel. And the super mansion panel was at the same or signing was at the same time as the timeless. So I could not go. So someone else got my 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 ticket. Whoever randomly got it in the standby line is the one who got it. Okay. So let's, from, from what I've gathered, the basic gist of people's opinions is if you won and you went, you thought it went incredibly well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you entered and you didn't win, you hate it. Um, which is about what we expected. But we did ask over the weekend for people who went what they thought. So I'd before we delve too much into what we thought, let's let's hear from people who actually went, if that's okay with you guys. Sure. Yeah. 
Okay, so Dave Metrin told us that it went smoothly. I want a Jim Lee autograph. Wish I knew I could have had multiple things signed because I only brought one. He heard remarks from folks behind him. They complained Sorry. that there were probably some people in line that didn't even know Jim Lee that had just signed up anyways. And we did hear a lot of people complaining about this. Right. Um, I mean... <laughs> And here's what I want to say about this. I understand your concerns. I understand that like a lot of people feel like this is taking away from, I hate this term, I hate it so much, real fans. But let's be honest, under the old system, there were plenty of people who just signed up to get the autographs to go sell it on eBay. <laughs> I mean, just look at eBay every year. Like, I don't feel as though you can say the old system, everyone like truly cared about the show. <laughs> right. But yes, Joshua Crowden said, I didn't like it for one big reason, lack of communication. I never realized there would be standby lines for people without wristbands in case those with wristbands didn't show up. I would have waited for more signings if I'd known that was an option, but he did get in for, he did win uh, the super mansion. Right. Yeah. Super mansion. Uh, Crazy Girl Vid said, the con literally kept telling us to stand somewhere that they said was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. standby line, and then after hours would say, oh, never mind, it's not. Yes, it is. It's not. So then people who waited less were the ones who ended up getting in. So that doesn't sound like it was fun. No, it does not. Uh, speaking of not fun, Janine Luciero said, I did win Unikitty for Friday. When I picked wristbands up, there was a standby line, but on Saturday, I was told no wristbands would be given out that day. 30 minutes later, they gave out wristbands. And Lauren Sanchez said, I didn't get into any, but I heard half the people who didn't show up for the 100 signing, so they just gave them out to a standby line that I didn't even know was a thing. Wasn't too happy to hear about that when I wanted in on that one. And Gigi Goddess said, I thought it was pretty straightforward and everyone at the DC Comics booth was super helpful when we missed our bracelet, pick up time, even we still got in. Uh, Z32 Kid says, I won the 100 signing and I think it went pretty smooth. For me, it was so much easier than waiting for hours on end. Uh, example, SDCC, hoping to get a chance to win something. Knowing that I won helped me plan the rest of the day week. If I didn't win, it would have... If I didn't win, it would have saved me a lot of time. And on a different note, and I loved this, Anne Henry said that she didn't win at all, but she attended a Gail Simone signing that wasn't part of the lottery at all. No wait, no issues. Her table was clearly marked for signing times. She was happy with the lottery. Uh, I met a ton of artists and got autogra autographs and or sketches that wouldn't have happened if I was waiting in a line. So, so basic so linings. Yes. So basically you can see that people who didn't win were kind of upset with what was going on with the, with the system or the lining up. Um, and people who did win thought it was a good idea. So where do we fall on this overall? I think, I think people's biggest issue was with the standby lines. And here's something you may not know. Standby lines have happened every single year. Every um, single year. But it's never a guarantee, and it wasn't a guarantee at all this year. Um, yeah, and so I understand being frustrated, but the thing, the thing with the standby lines is always they're not real until suddenly they are. <laughs> Basically, it's not supposed to happen, but then all of a sudden it does. So it's, it's really more of a case of like right place, right time than like, oh, Comic-Con International should have told me that I could line up for this because they could have just as easily decided we don't really want to do it for this one. It all depends on so many factors. It depends on how many people showed up to pick up their wristbands. It depends on how many wristbands total they gave out in the first place. It depends on a million things. Someone so, may be running late and they don't yeah. have time to fit in as many people, so let's not hand them out because we only can fit the 50 that showed up. Yeah, so it's never a guarantee. Um, I did hear, it wasn't on those comments, but I did hear from someone <laughs> who said that they went up to someone and asked, is there going to be a standby line for this? They were told no. 
they start to walk off. Someone else walks up to the same security guard, asks, and the security guard said, yes, wait here. <laughs> That's not cool. That is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> that I would have been severely pissed at. <laughs> like, if you're going to give an answer, give the same answer for everyone. Don't, like, change your answer five seconds later. Um, but again, I understand the frustration, but the thing with the standby lines is just, it's never a guarantee. <sighs> and and Comic-Con International, CCI, does not want people lining up for things that don't exist. Yes. Because until it does exist, they don't want you hanging around. Yeah. So you kind of have to loiter and not look like you're lining up until you hear that there's, hey, there's standby wristbands for this happening. Yes. yes. So unfortunately, it's like you said, it's it it doesn't happen until it happens. Yes. And you can get a different answer every five minutes. You you can literally get an answer Which from a different I think person asking the same that. person. Yeah. And I need they think they need to be honest with people and say it is not happening until it's happening, and we don't know it's happening until it does. Until yeah. they tell us it's happening. Yes. And they need to be very clear about that. And I think what you said at the beginning of the show is, we just want to know. Let us know, even if you don't know specifically what something, let us know what the plan is. We will have standby tickets or wristbands if they're available, but we don't know until half hour, one hour before, come back and check. We don't know. We may find out in five minutes. We may find out in an hour, but until it's announced, there is no standby line. Yeah. So that's I think that's one of the main issues with that on site is people need to communicate to the fans that are waiting what's going on. I agree. And I do again, I think the overall process of like an online lottery is a good idea. I do think that there are definitely some improvements that could be made. Um, for instance, for people like you, James, who won but who don't want it. Like who d who d were like you know I think I want this but or because something comes out with a schedule that automatically because yes. they don't give us the times for the signings yes. so we don't know it's a conflict until close what do we do yes. so in my personal opinion what they should do is they should add like a I want to release these tickets button um, right. and I think that if you don't release your tickets and you don't attend there should be a penalty for you. Like maybe you can't participate in the lottery the next year. Back of the line. Yeah. No, I, like I think it needs to be like an actual punishment for like, yeah. you signed up for this, you didn't use it. Uh, it like it causes, it causes issues. I mean, right. it really and truly does. And because I think that some of the uh, living near LA, you, you do get to go to things like uh, tapings of shows and such, and for uh, companies like One Iota, who runs the Conan ones, they do say it in some of their fine print that if you sign up for an event and then um, you don't show up, they will keep you from signing up for future events. And, and so something similar to that should probably be instituted for these signings if they're going to have them happen online. Yes, I, I completely agree, and I think that's a I think that's a great idea. Um, I know that we've also discussed, like, in a perfect world, <laughs> people would only sign up for the ones that they want. But that's not the world that we live in. And people are just like, I want stuff. So people are going to sign up for literally anything and everything that's available. Um, and that does suck. So maybe, maybe it should be like you are allowed to sign up for one a day. You know, like choose right. the one that you want that day or a day, five for the entire show, 10 for the entire show, some limit. Yes, there should be some kind of limit on it. And again, if you win and you can't go, like you have to release it or you don't get to participate the next year. <laughs> so those would be my personal suggestions. Honestly, I would love to hear other people's suggestions for how this could work beyond just let's go back to the old system. Um, and <laughs> someone asked, Alyssa asked, is the signing lottery for sure going to be implemented for San Diego Comic-Con? And the answer to that is it's not for sure. Nope. They only announced it for WonderCon, but as Sean Marshall, AKA Parks and Cons told me over the weekend, <laughs> the reason they call it WonderCon is because Comic-Con International goes, gee, 
I wonder what would happen if we did this at San Diego. <laughs> if only we had a convention to try it out at. <laughs> Let's call it WonderCon. <laughs> with, with, with less stakes. <laughs> yes, with yeah. much less stakes, much less people, all of that. So much easier to implement. Um, and they've they've tried different things out at WonderCon over the years. RFID started there last year, last year or two years ago. Comic Con National like tried to sell badges through their own system instead of using Expo Logic uh, to WonderCon. That didn't go super well. <laughs> um, That's they, probably why they're looking for software developers right now. They, they used the Toucan trackers first at WonderCon. So like <laughs> all kinds of things start as basically like a beta testing at WonderCon. And in fact, I think even John Rogers in TalkBack said, let me see if I can find this quote quickly. But I think he made some comment even of like, I would be like, we would be stupid not to be testing this at WonderCon. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Um, so, a uh, question from uh, Sir Lister Smeg. Do you think the lottery at WonderCon was a result of the Hall H fiasco last year? If so, do you think other things like exclusives and maybe Hall H will also be an online lottery this year? Well, first, right off the bat, I don't know if Hall H was the exact direct link, but I'm sure it. just everything in general about Comic-Con was probably a result. And no, Hall H will most likely never be an online lottery. Yeah, I agree. And in fact, we had heard the rumor actually that this year uh, they would be moving to an online lottery system for autographs last year before the Hall H fiasco even happened. So I don't think that one is impacting the other. Um, I do think the Hall H fiasco is going to make a change to how Hall H is handled this year, but I don't think it's going to involve an online lottery. I agree. I completely agree. I agree and for well. exclusives, yep. um, that because exclusives are not run by Comic-Con, it's hard to say if they will implement that because it's, it's a lot harder to wrangle all the different companies unless they basically force them to. So, it is, but there's really not that many of them up in sales. So, like, the ones you've got up in sales are, like, what, Funko, Hasbro, Lego to an extent. Like, they're already kind of their own little weird system. But I feel like Lego or not Lego, Hasbro and Funko, like you could easily do an online lottery for. But having said that, I feel like if they do it this year, they will start out with the autographs, see how that goes at Comic-Con, <laughs> and then extend it to exclusives. But yeah. Well, let's, let's point out so that everybody understands that signings at Comic-Con have always been a lottery for years. They, you, you got in line, yes, you put yourself in line physically instead of online and entering online, but you entered by getting in line the night before if you had to, whatever it may be. But when you got up there, it was a lottery because you were drawing a random ticket out of a tub or whatever it may be to see if you won. That has not changed. It's still a lottery. Yeah. Obviously, now the pool of people is now bigger who are standing in line if they're doing it online. But it hasn't changed that it's a lottery. So the lottery portion has not changed. It's just now more people are entering. And you also have to remember, like, the system as it was was very broken. Like, there have been so many issues with people rushing the back stairs and basically cutting off the people who have waited in line that, like, something needed to be done. And I, I think this is a good idea. I think it has a lot of potential to work at Comic-Con very well. They do obviously need to make some tweaks from what happened at WonderCon. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a step in the right direction. Like, again, the le and everybody's always like, well, if they're not waiting in that line, like, they're just going to go make another line longer. Maybe they're not. <laughs> Maybe they're going to go sleep in. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they're going to go to another signing and discover things that they didn't see before. Yes. Yes. And one thing I wanted to mention as well, because we've had a couple questions about this. If they do this at Comic-Con, the only companies who I believe will be affected will be WB, Fox, 
and then the Comic-Con ones that were lotteries anyway. So basically, again, the ones up in sales that were lotteries anyway. So it won't be like AMC and Marvel and all that jazz. The ones who run it solely at the booth. Yes. So. God, I wish they would include Marvel because they're <laughs> a mess. Yeah. Um, so well, let me see if there was any tickets. Uh, yeah, that David Nor. that was David Norwood's question. So about which events would be included in this. Um, so we liked it. Again, we I liked it. Again, I think, I think the basic perception is if I won, it went great. If I didn't, it sucked. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think, I think we need to point out that if they implement this at Comic-Con, what it does, um, because it was such a problem, la especially last year, but, pretty much every year, is if you take away the signing lines in the morning, you remove that many people to confuse yep. the back of the convention center, you take and you remove that many people who would cut in line, uh, who, you know, we know, we know that happens out there in the back, people just walk up and cut in line. So if you remove that, that kind of negates the, there's more people entering because you had more people entering in front of you in the previous process because they cut in line. And so, yes, maybe you had like a hundred people cutting in front of you rather than like a hundred thousand. <laughs> but still, again, it was always a lottery. Okay. Like it was always a lottery. And for as much as people commented on it on social media, whatever, I didn't, personally witness any public grumblings about it. Nobody wanted to start a revolution. There were no torches and pitchforks, mainly because it was all cosplay. But I didn't really see anybody have a major problem with it at WonderCon. Yes, I completely agree that things need to be tweaked. I completely agree that communication needs to be a lot better between CCI and their volunteers in general. But I, I, I think like Carrie said, it's a step in the right direction. And I think that it's, it's something that, that could be a good thing. I think it's got a lot of potential. So I, I never say this, but good on Comic-Con International. Like I, <laughs> Sometimes I they the get world it right. is ending. I really and truly think like, this is a great idea. Like normally I am anti-lottery i'm like you should have to work <laughs> for stuff but again it was always a lottery <laughs> is what i just keep circling back to it was always a lottery so and i, I know now, a lot of people are like broken hearted about this and i know that it sucks for those people i do i i understand your frustration um and we know change is hard. You can always hope there's a standby line at Comic-Con, I guess. Because a lot of people did not show up at WonderCon, and that sucks. But again, that's why there should be a penalty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So that was the, the signing, which was the big deal at WonderCon this year. But let's talk about the rest of the show, uh, at least a little bit. Um, <clears throat> it felt to me like the direction that WonderCon has been heading and kind of fully embraced this year is co is cosplay and artists. Artist Alley grew this year yeah. <clears throat> by leaps and bounds. There was a ton of artists there. Um, cosplay was, I, I don't know if it was out in the area because of the construction last year, so I don't think it was, but the secondary fountain out by the arena turned into a smaller version of the larger fountain cosplay gatherings. There were photographers and cosplayers uh, out there in that area between the new North building and the arena all day, every day. Um, it wasn't as big a crowd as in front of the main fountain, but it was still large uh, and a lot of people. So that was pretty cool that now there's a secondary area for people to hang out. And also in discussing that new North building, um, I think it, uh, it was used fairly well. They used two panel, giant panel, well, not giant, two bigger panel rooms uh, on the 200 on the second floor, 200 A and B. And uh, the seating on those was around 800 to 1000, depending on which room you were in. Um, those were about the same size as the 300s from previous years, which they still use this year. So essentially, they had two new bigger rooms. Um, it worked really well. 
So being able to split up and have extra panels and different things, the room, I think only really filled up a few times. Um, Reverie was packed because right after it was Cloak and Dagger and Cloak and Dagger was packed. Um, but still, I got in line during Reverie, uh, like half an hour before uh, Cloak and Dagger started, and I made it in. So WonderCon is obviously not Comic-Con. You can get into stuff <laughs> even if you put in a minimal weight. Um, the next day, we got there because we wanted near the front for photos. We got in uh, to, in line like 8 a.m. in the morning to get into the programming line. We got in. We went up to the second floor, and we were like 15th in line. 20th in line, something like that. So we managed to get exactly the seats we wanted. And then we stayed in there through Timeless and it was great. So I think that a combination of adding rooms, um, there was the first floor, which was used for a lot of smaller rooms in the VR room and all th- and, uh, in the VR area and all kinds of things. So um, I, I enjoy WonderCon for its slow pace and less crowds. Uh, it's really cool. Um, I got a little sick on Saturday night. So I didn't go on Sunday and I'm really sad about that because that's a whole day of photos I didn't take uh, and cosplay. I didn't see and all that, but you know, Hey, I got to sleep until noon. So <laughs> that was great. Um, Lucky. So yeah. So uh, Andy, you, this was your first year going. What were your impressions? My first impressions were, I loved it. I had a blast. Um, well, I know a lot of people call it comic con light or comic con's little sister, however you want to look at it. But, like you pointed out, there was a ton of art, a ton of cosplay, and I'm a big fan of both. I loved seeing all the cosplay on the fountains. I was there for an impromptu Cupid shuffle that just kind of happened. And I thought, this is this is awesome. Just going somewhere and seeing this stuff break out because, hey, people feel like doing it. But I don't even think you could find room for that in San Diego. Um especially now that there's, you know, complications with zombie walks and things like that. So WonderCon was just a very much more relaxed atmosphere. I could take my time and there were places to sit. That was fun. <laughs> Always That's I, big. That's huge. I enjoyed having little chairs and benches around that convention center. And it didn't feel like I was packed in like a sardine. Um, when I was going through Artist Alley, when I was going through the exhibit hall floor, there weren't specific areas that I was saying, I'm not going to go here right now because I'm sure it's just a swamp of people. You know, I just, I, I walked wherever and I, I found a bunch of stuff that I was looking for and then some. So uh, I feel Night Bodega just brought this up, but it's really the only question that matters. Uh, let's talk about the food trucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 those those were magical. Carrie, you are so right about those. I tell you, that's the best part of WonderCon. It is. It really is. When we were waiting in line uh, in the morning, the people that were, because we were in the second shoot near the front, the people that were in the first shoot, one of them went and got a burrito and they're like, they know they recognize me and they're like, yeah, you guys told us about this. This is awesome. And then the next person next to them went and got one. And then the next person next to them went and got one. So- <gasps> That's so funny because it was like 2014, I think, was the year I went with Sarah, who's our graphic designer, if, if you guys don't know. <laughs> and she got like this burrito at Barcelona on the go, a breakfast burrito. And she has like not shut up about it in <laughs> four years. <laughs> and everybody's like, <laughs> you are so right. These are amazing. They are yeah, amazing. While we were in line for like that hour before they let us in, there were like three different people right next to me who went and got the breakfast burrito. And That's awesome. I, that I'm definitely happy. going back next year because there are still so many food trucks I want to try. I mean, that's the right attitude. So. Yeah. Just in case you guys didn't know that Wait. Food Trucks Guide to WonderCon is my favorite thing I read it's, all year. It's like, <laughs> there's a convention going on. I'm here for the food trucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about this. So <laughs> that's good. Well, I'm glad you had fun, Andy. So I, I did. Wonderful. I had a blast, and I'm, I'm going to do my best to get there next year as well. Good. Good. Um, we did have a couple quick questions. So let's get to these. Francis Liu asked, with the autograph lotteries being online, how was the crowd on the show floor? If there aren't thousands of people queued up away from the show floor, wouldn't it cause a surge of people on the floor? Not really. I mean, the WonderCon show floor didn't seem to be any extra crowded more than it usually is. I mean, the show actually, I think, just barely sold out right before the con. 
Yeah, um, I think I heard Sunday finally sold out Saturday night. Right. So it was crowded, but it was always been crowded. So I don't think it was because what lines lines like that don't really pull people off of the show floor because ten people tend to get their signing around the time the show floor opens. So if they get their signing, they may go to the show floor until it's time or whatever they're going to do. What gets people off the show floor is panels that people actually want to go to. And I think that they did a good job of having a variety of panels and most of the rooms being fuller on Saturday. Like the arena was full twice um, for Ready Player One. And I think it filled up or got close to it for S.H.I.E.L.D. So getting those big rooms filled is what gets people off the show floor. And so when that happens, that's when you have the show floor having a little bit of elbow room, um, not actually people waiting in lines at six o'clock in the morning. Well, not only that, but like we, we've talked about this with Comic-Con as well. Not everyone who would have been in line for a lottery is now immediately going to go join the same line. Like, right. especially at something like Comic-Con, like some of them are going to go join the Hall H line. Some of them are going to go join the show floor line. Some of them are going to go join this, join this offsite line. Some, some of them are going to go back to them. bed like they should. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, it will... I'm sure it will increase lines, but I feel like it will be negligible. Yeah. So. And again, the, the benefit is the less people cutting in line and the less, if there's literally thousands or at least a thousand people less in that area in the morning, that is a thousand less people to cause havoc with the other lines for the exclusives and such. So it's a positive. And not only that, but as we talked about earlier, what is the number one thing that convention attendees want? Information. How much nicer is it to know, like, hey, I ha I'm getting this lottery before the convention even starts? Right. Like, I think that's yeah. invaluable. You can so they, plan they should, ahead. They should tell you the time before you pick up your Yes. Hotel. They should. Telling us the time, it does not cause any issues. They, no. um, I think where they are... Uh, hesitant to give out information is because some of the signings happen in rooms that are off the beaten path, um, out of public view. So they don't want to advertise where those rooms are. You don't have to tell us where it is, but if you tell us when it is, we can plan the rest of our day. Yeah, that's a hundred percent correct. Yep. Okay. And then Alyssa Gonzalez asks, this is kind of random, but what do you think the chances are that Westworld will have an awesome offsite like last year? I didn't get to go last year and it haunts me <laughs> still to this day. <laughs> um, first of all, I'm very sorry you didn't get to go. I am very sorry, apparently, that I didn't go to South by Southwest for that Westworld offsite because, oh my God, that looked amazing. Um, <laughs> but I'm just, I am very certain that HBO will do something, especially with Game of Thrones about to end. Like Westworld is now the thing that they want to rule Comic-Con because, wow. yeah. And HBO has always had a big Comic-Con presence with yes. True Blood, Game of Thrones, now Westworld. So yeah, they, they're bound to bring something. Yes. Now, I don't know. I sincerely doubt that it will be the same experience that it was last year. I also, I don't know if they would bring anything like what they brought to South by Southwest. I don't feel like there's the space to do that, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, will they do yeah. something super limited like that? I don't, I don't think they will this time. I think the super limited thing was to get that publicity and to just break into Comic-Con with a splash and be like, look at us. And then now they can go back to the kind of the nice and good, but still like, let's get a lot of people through to keep the, keep the, keep it going kind of a thing. But who knows? They could do another limited one. Yeah. I have no idea, but yes, I absolutely think that they will do something. Um, did we have any more questions? I'm not seeing anything. All right, I think we had just a tiny little bit more Comic-Con news, James. We did. The convention center has been getting upgrades. Last year, some of them, some of them already happened last year, but this year, uh, they replaced the sales, um, and uh, they did some other things. I think they did something to the floor in the sales area. Well, we had a new floor as of last Comic-Con. Okay, actually. but the sales now light up. And they wow. look amazing. 
It, yeah. it is pretty. It, so that's it really does cool. look nice. I'm going to have to go back up on to the bridge or somewhere across the street and take another night picture because that's pretty awesome. It I hope looks, they light them up every night. I, I, I am very certain that they will. I mean, the convention center, honestly, like they love Comic-Con. I don't know if you guys do know this, but like they do special chocolates every year during Comic-Con. That's something I learned last year. Mm -hmm. Like they love They're Comic-Con. Yes. They're really good. So I'm sure that they will do something cool with those lights and I'm very excited. Yes. Um, beyond that, as much fun as we have had tonight, we will not be back for a little while. Our regular SCCon cast season will actually start on Tuesday, May 8th. And we've already got some really cool guests lined up that we are oh, yeah. very excited about. Uh, and someone asked earlier, and we've announced this before, but Too Fast, Too Furious, Gaslamp Drift will be happening this year. I have no idea where. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I am determined that it will not cost money. It may, as I threaten every year, it may literally be me standing on the lawn somewhere handing out Dixie cups of water, but it will happen. <laughs> And so. so will Prize Mule. Yes, Prize Mule is here to stay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, we love Prize Mule just as much as you guys do. Like, we love getting to meet you guys. We love getting to post stupid photos with unicorns. Like, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, <laughs> yeah. And I, I have fun with Gerald, and I still have fun with a, with a stuffed unicorn, and I don't care who knows. That's right. That now, the is only, right. The only, ha the only hassle is trying to get the photo taken without someone noticing. So they're just yeah. standing oh. waiting when they see it. And they're like, I, I see that's that's a unicorn. That's a prize mule. I'm just going to hang out until he posts it. And then I'm going to go get it. I'm going to put this out there right now. If you see me and I see you kind of hovering, I'm going to go somewhere else. So just kind of make it look discreet. I don't, I don't want you swarming right yeah. after. There is no I line until we announce the line. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't happen until five minutes after it's done. I love this. Sir, Les Sir Lister of Smeg said, do we get to keep the Dixie Cup? If it is indeed me standing on a lot sure. handing out Dixie Cups, yes, you can. Free swag. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Behind her with a Sharpie writing SDCC unofficial blog on each Dixie Cup. That's right. We can, we can like hand draw the little logo. Yeah, it'll be, it'll not? be a work of art. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Best party in Comic Con, guys. Um, I do want to say it will be on Wednesday. That's the one thing we do know. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it won't, it won't it be more than this about three hours because we want to attend the con too. And if we have a massive party on Wednesday night, it's going to make the rest of the week rough. We all know that. You got to, you got to. I mean, some people can do it, but come on. I'm, see, old. Old. I'm old. So, so am I, dude. So am I. I got, I got the same white. So I need a little bit of sleep, you know, give me my four or five hours at least. That's what right. Speaking of, I got to I gotta go sleep up. on the ground. Yeah. Time to wrap this <laughs> time up. To wrap up the wrap up show. Okay. So as Carrie mentioned, the 2018 season of SD Concast will officially start on May 8th. We'll be bringing you all the news views and special guests leading up to SDCC 2018. Uh, so please join us uh, live. Uh, YouTube live Tuesday nights, unless we happen to have a scheduling conflict, it'll be on Wednesday, but mostly Tuesday nights every week. And don't forget our scheduled podcast will be when the schedule comes out and we're just going to have an awesome time leading up to it with special guests and everything. So please join us. Woo. You can sign up for our newsletter. We do actually send them out occasionally. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us. We hope you join us in six weeks. Uh, Andy, where can we find more of your work on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as SDCC Wacky Wags. Uh, what about you, Carrie? Where can we find more of your work on the internet? You don't want to find me online, but I'm. We at all Carrie. want to find you, Carrie. You really don't. But I'm at Carrie Dixon on Twitter. And James, where can we find more of your work on the internet? Uh, first off, question is what does my shirt say? And it says, we troll the SDCC hashtag so you don't have to. It was our staff shirt from a few years ago. And you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find me everywhere online at Dan Regal. It's Twitter, Flickr, Instagram, everywhere if I ever post, which usually it's only about Comic-Con. So, uh, yeah, um, that's where you can find me. Oh, and oh, check out GeekShotPhoto.com for uh, photography from my wife and I. Oh, yes. yeah. 
Yes, we are on iTunes. If you'd like to subscribe, the links are up in the blog. If you can access it, or you can search for SD Concast. If you like what you've heard so far, please review us. We are also on Stitcher Radio. The link is in the show notes. If you want to get a hold of us, you can send us an email at sdcomiccon.blog at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash sdconblog, or tweet us at sd underscore comic underscore con. Thank you all for listening, and everybody... Go Hello. 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 next week's. <laughs>